Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Strykith, and this is a Goblins vs. Gnomes Control Warrior. Now, it's been a while since I've made one of these deck videos because, well, there were really no new and interesting decks to make. Everything was already pretty stale before this expansion came out. If you don't know what Goblins vs. Gnomes is, it's 120 new cards that just got dumped into the game at the same time. So this has created a lot of crazy new decks, and a lot of really interesting things are happening right now in Hearthstone. So if you don't play Hearthstone anymore, you might want to go and check it out and uh, play some arena matches and see what you think of the new cards. So let's hop into this deck. The first thing that you might notice is, where's the armor smith? And what the hell is an explosive sheep? Well, Death Rattle, deal two damage to all minions. It's a two cost card that has one health and one attack. Not very impressive stats wise, but it's the Death Rattle that really makes this card valuable. So I've got two of these in the deck. Every time one of them dies, it's two damage to everything on the board, including your own stuff. This, of course, combos extremely well with other cards like Acolyte of Pain. Uh, not as efficiently, of course, as doing one damage with Death Rattle or Whirlwind, but it certainly can combo with it. And uh, the other card that combos with it is Unstable Ghoul. Uh, so Unstable Ghoul does one damage to all minions, right? So you drop an Unstable Ghoul onto the board. You drop an Explosive Sheep. And not only do they have to waste damage on the Unstable Ghoul, but when it dies, you're dealing three damage to everything on the board. This, in my opinion, is what Control Warrior needed, more than the armor that you got from Armorsmith. We needed some way to control the board against aggro decks that just keep pumping minion after minion after minion onto the board. It's almost like an endless wave. So in the, in the past, the only thing we had was Brawl. And how many Brawls can you really put into a deck? One is really all I can make room for in any of my uh, Control Warrior builds. It's just two brawls is excessive. It's a waste of a slot. So we need some way to kind of get a board presence, but also to wipe their board efficiently. So you have lots of options for that. Despite, Explosive Sheep, and Unstable Ghoul all work extremely well together. And I've had fabulous success in just preventing Zulox and these new Shaman Murloc decks and all that other really annoying stuff from just getting a foothold on the board. I mean, you can even combat with a Cruel Taskmaster. You drop an Explosive Sheep, then you drop the uh, Cruel Taskmaster and just bam. I mean, yeah, it's kind of a waste of a Cruel Taskmaster because he dies, but in like a emergency situation where you just absolutely need that two damage to everything on the board right then and there, that's certainly an option. So what else is new? that has been added to this. You'll see a lot of cards that you expect, right? Acclaim Pain, Big Game Hunter, Sludge Belcher, uh, Iron Juggernaut, what the hell is that? Iron Juggernaut is the new Warrior Legendary. Battle Cry, shuffle a mine into your opponent's deck. When drawn, it explodes for 10 damage. It's basically a six cost Pyroblast, it's insane. Now, the card itself is of course just a six five body for six, which isn't fantastic, but this is another thing that I felt, personally, that Warrior needed. And I, there's certainly people that disagree with me on this. Uh, right now, I think there's a lot of... It's kind of a 50-50 split on Iron Juggernaut. Some people like it, other people don't. But more often than not, Warrior goes to the late game, to the very end of the game. You and your opponent have like seven cards left, or you even just both run out of cards. And as a Warrior, you can sometimes run out of threats. You just... You've used all of your cards, they've had reactions to everything you've put out, they've been able to deal with it, and you just don't have any other potential ways of dealing with them. You know, they're at 9 life, you've got nothing but this fiery war axe that you drew as your last card, and there's just no other way for you to kill them. And then, bam, they draw the mine and 10 damage and they're dead. Surprisingly, this card has won me quite a few games. I, it's insane too, even in the, the mid game, right? Like say they're at uh, 22 life, right? And you have Gromash and you have uh, the Cruel Taskmaster in your hand. So there's the option of you actually being able to uh, hit them with a mine. And then next turn, if you have enough mana, you could Gromash and Cruel Taskmaster them for the win. So it, it's all kinds of craziness that you can potentially do with uh, this card. And I just really like it. 
Now, I can certainly see people replacing it, and that's totally up to you, and I respect you if you do, but uh, if for me, it's won me more games than it's lost me, and to me, that's a good thing. So I'm keeping it in my deck. Now, of course, Shield Maiden is another new card. It's a 6 cost, 5-5. Five, five. Again, not the best on mana, but it gains you 5 armor. So this kind of helps make up for not having the armor smiths in your deck, right? So every time you play this card, gain 5 life. Pretty good. There's two of them in the deck, and of course you have your classic shield blocks, so you have basically gained 20 life in this deck on top of your regular armor ability. You might think, well, I'm just not going to have enough armor to play Control Warrior without the Armorsmiths in the deck, but I found that's not the case. There's plenty of games I've ended where I've had 40 or 50 life or more just because of all the armor that I've accumulated through the course of the game, and my opponent just hasn't had enough threats to deal with the shield maidens and everything else I put on the board which are also getting me life at the same time and of course the great thing about this is you can put a 5-5 five five on the board and with 7 mana you can also combine this with a shield slam so now you've got a 5-5 five five on the board where in the past you would never have something like that so that's a 5-5 five five your opponent has to deal with or if they can't deal with it will just hit them in the face as opposed to the shield block and shield slam combo which while cheaper on mana yes doesn't gain you any sort of board presence so this is another thing that i feel that the warrior needed it makes you less reactive and more proactive in maintaining control of the board a great card now trogzor the earthinator is another new card and i love this card it basically neuters anybody that casts spells priests have gotten this new card called velen's chosen which is insane. It's a three cost card and it gives a minion plus two plus four. They a lot of priests have been comboing that with the cleric, making that a three seven, which is insane because not only is it a three seven, which is fairly hard to kill, and definitely outside of weapon range, but they can keep healing it for endless card draw every turn. So Trogzor is your card for dealing with those really annoying uh, control mages or freeze mages, or uh, really annoying priests. Uh, even other control warriors, and so on and so forth. We don't know what a Burly Rockjaw Trog is, and it's new cards, so you wouldn't. Uh, basically, it's a 3-5 minion that gains plus 2 attack every single time a spell is cast. And every single time your opponent casts a spell, Trogzor summons a Burly Rockjaw Trog. So you could have a board full of these things if they really go crazy. Uh, it's really cool, because... With the addition of mechs into the game, a lot of the mechs have death rattles where when they die, it puts a spare part into your hand. Sometimes it's both of the people playing the game. Sometimes it's just the person that played the card. So uh, these are a bunch of like little one-cost spells, and Trogs are basically prevents them from playing all these spare parts in their hand. Because every single time they play a spare part, you get a 3-5 minion on the board. That's a pretty good deal for you. And if you're up against like a mage or a priest and it eats a fireball or a shadow word death you still get a three five on the board either way and that's still something else they have to deal with uh you might even uh bait out some of their uh, other crazy removal spells on Trogzor as opposed to something else later in the game like your ragnaros your alex Straza, or anything else now of course you got your gromash hell screen that is a given for any control warrior deck in my opinion ragnaros again in my opinion he's a given I know a lot of people are kind of iffy about Ragnaros these days, but he just fits Control Warrior so well because more often than not, you just need that burst damage. And that 8 damage to the face on an empty board, it can be just so good as a Control Warrior. And of course, Alex Straza. Not only can you bring your opponent's life down, but you can also bring your own life back up and get an 8-8 on the board. No question as to whether this card is good or not or whether it has a place in this deck. It certainly does. So aside from that, this deck has been absolutely solid all the way around. The only complaint that I might have with it is perhaps that the Explosive Sheep isn't always effective as I would like it to be. Uh, sometimes, for example, they will be able to get around it by dropping higher health minions or uh, basically buffing up their existing minions to get outside of the Explosive Sheep range. And of course, you don't want to drop Explosive Sheep onto the board without any way to trigger it. So uh, you really need to use this kind of like a mid to late game and you need to combo it with something else so that they can't do that. But 
But there is always a potential that they are going to do this regardless of whether or not you drop explosive sheep. And so it can be really annoying trying to deal with some of these minions. And sometimes I have felt where I really wish I had an armor smith that I could have dropped with my sludge belcher or some of my other minions to help gain some armor or to kind of take the focus away from my face and put a minion that they have to immediately deal with on the board. So it's not all sunshine and rainbows, but as far as downsides go, that's the only real downside that I've so far encountered playing this deck. And I think it's pretty fantastic. Now, another combination that I've seen is, of course, Dr. Boom. And he would actually synergize very well with this deck. But right now, in the current meta, I personally think that Trogzor is more beneficial to my deck. Uh, but Dr. Boom is, of course, a 7 cost, 7-7, seven, seven, which is a better body, of course, than Trogzor, who's a 6-6. Six, six. And he summons two 1-1 one, one Boom Bots. It doesn't say what these do in the description here, but uh, as you can see, they may explode. Basically, they're 1-1s. One, and whenever they die, they drop a bomb that will do anywhere between 1 to 4 damage either to your opponent's face or to a random minion. So you never really know where it's going to hit. Um, the reason that I don't have it in the deck is, of course, because it's not reliable damage. Yes, it will do damage, but you don't have any say as to where it hits. So I just don't feel that he's quite strong enough. But you could certainly put him in your deck. He will work. Uh, I just feel that Trogzor is ultimately stronger because... Uh, again, the idea behind Control Warrior is to control the board and to prevent your opponent from gaining any sort of board presence or from doing things in general. So uh, one thing that we've never really had in the past as a Control Warrior is the ability to deal with spellcasters. And now with Trogzor, we do. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is the new Control Warrior for Goblins vs. Gnomes. I may also post up some gameplay later on my channel, but feel free to try it out. Test it out on your own, and I uh, hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching, and this is Striketh, checking out.